What's happening, keyboard playing friends? Matt Vanacora with our pals at Gig Performer, and today we are going to check out my top three ways of using multiple MIDI controllers with Gig Performer 4. That's right. Who are my dual keyboard playing friends? I love using two keyboards when I play live. I want to have lots of different potential for sounds between the two keyboards. And I've got three scenarios that you might fall into. So let's just dive in. All right, my first scenario is if you want to have both keyboards playing the same sound. Now, my, why might you want that? Well, I have a lot of friends that go on tour and they have multiple keyboards triggering the same setup. They want to be able to play on one side of the stage, turn, play the other side of the stage, and know that both keyboards can trigger whatever sound they have up. They don't want to manage them separately. Or some of you out there like some wireless setups, like a wireless keytar or something that's triggering sounds in Gig Performer. You want to be able to pick that keytar up, walk to the front of the stage, and not worry that you've got to set that sound separately from your main setup. Well, don't worry. It's pretty easy to do that. So if you look here, I've got a Jupiter 8 block ready to go. So I have a sound ready to go. It's already patched to my audio uh, interface output. So I need to set up a MIDI input device. When I'm doing that and I go to MIDI inputs, you'll see I've got a couple of choices. I have all these keyboards plugged in. Now, if I pick one of them, like the Keylab 88, all right, you'll notice that once I patch that through and I connect it to the MIDI input of the Jupiter, I now have sound from that keyboard, but no sound from my top keyboard, the Akai keyboard. And that one's hooked up. Should be making sound, but it's not. And that's because I've told it specifically to route just the key lap. But that's okay. What you can do is use the MIDI in block that is labeled Omni. So right there, Omni is going to allow you to take any MIDI input at all, anything you've got plugged in, and it will trigger that instrument. So if I touch my Arturia controller, it's triggering that Jupiter instrument. If I touch my Akai controller, it's triggering that instrument. They're both triggering the same instrument. And that's what that MIDI Omni block is for. And it's really helpful because now all I have to do is always use the MIDI Omni block. I could plug in five keyboards and all of them are going to trigger it. It could be anywhere on the stage, which is really cool. Now, Let's take the other scenario that's a little more common than that. For those of us that are not setting up a million keyboards all over the place, you got two keyboards, you want them to play two different sounds, right? Maybe you want to have a piano and a synth, or a piano and an organ, you know, that kind of thing. A lot of us do that. So I can't use the MIDI Omni now because obviously that would just, both keyboards would trigger. We've already seen what would happen. So I'm going to delete that. And what I'm going to do is set up the MIDI input blocks separately. I go to MIDI inputs, I choose my key lab. All right, we'll close that. There's the key lab. I'm going to pop the key lab above the piano. I want my 88 key weighted controller to trigger my piano. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to MIDI inputs. And now I'm going to call up that Akai LPK. A little cute keyboard guy. Nice little wireless keyboard. All right, so now I'll make my connections. My key lab goes to the piano. Let's see. There we go. And my Akai goes to that Jupiter synth. Wow, there we go. I could play them together. I could play them separate. And everything is set. So every time I make a patch, uh, if I set the key lab to one sound and the Akai to another sound, I now have the ability to play them separately. And of course, I can go into the instruments themselves and adjust the volumes. Or if I really wanted to, I could go ahead and go into audio mixers and set up an audio mixer, and that will allow me to adjust the volume independently of the you know, piano versus the synth. So if you want to have control of it a little bit easier, you can do that, or you could just go in the instrument itself. Let's talk about a third scenario. This one is really common for a lot of really club daters and working musicians, and that is, what if you wanted to have one keyboard stay the same the whole night? and then another keyboard rotate through with different patches. That happens like, um, you know, I'll play a gig and I know I'm going to use a piano sound all night long, but I want my second keyboard to rotate piano and synth, piano and organ, or vice versa. I'm going to do most of the gig with this 88 key keyboard, but this top keyboard, I want it to be an organ all night long. I'm going to use, I'm playing a funk band type thing and I need an organ at my fingertips at any moment. So if you want one keyboard to switch 
and the other one to stay static. Now you could go through every single patch and make sure that the bottom keyboard is always routed to piano, but that could be a little time consuming. There's a better way to do it. Let's take a look. I'm going to get rid of these MIDI in blocks for right now. Okay, so none of my two patches here have MIDI in blocks. I got two different rack spaces. I'm going to go to the global rack space. And this is for stuff that persists for the entire gig, the entire gig file. So I just click on this little global picture right there to see the global rack space. And it's in the global rack space that I can make a patch that's going to persist and stay. So in here, if I set up, for example, a MIDI input for my key lab, all right, just the big keyboard here, and I'm going to hook it up to a piano. So I'll go ahead and go into Arturia and I'll pick out the piano instrument, okay? So pick out that sucker. There it goes. Now, the Arturia, once I make the connection, the Arturia is now controlling the piano. And I'll hold down shift while I'm dragging the audio output so it assigns left and right at the same time. And now, the Arturia is piano, but it's going to be piano for the whole gig. When I get out of here, you'll see these rack spaces. So I got a Jupiter right there, right? Let me assign my little LPK to the Jupiter. Here you go, buddy. All right, and then I'll go to the second rack space. And I don't even need this piano anymore. I'm just going to get rid of it. And let's uh, get rid of the Jupiter 2 just so that we know that we're using two different instruments. I'll go ahead and go to the MIDI input. Let's get LPK over there. Hello, friend. And let's pick another instrument. So I'll go to Arturia. And let's say we're going to pick, let's pick a nice little Wurlitzer. All right. Good old Whirly V2. All right. There's our Wurlitzer friend. Let's assign the LPK to the Wurlitzer. And we will route that out to the audio. So now, if I go to my first rack space, my LPK is Jupiter synth. And in the second rack space, it's Wurlitzer. But guess what? My piano is piano in both rack spaces. Notice, by the way, that the sound persists between the rack spaces. If I hold the sustain pedal down, no change between rack spaces. You hear that sound decay going, the reverb, everything is persisting between the rack spaces. So now for this entire gig, I've got a big 88 key controller that's going to be piano the whole night. And I've got a keyboard on top that's going to change all night long. And I don't even need to clutter up my rack space all these different rack spaces with the bottom keyboard. The bottom keyboard is in the global rack space where it will remain all evening. And then every single other patch is just for the LPK and I can just worry about that keyboard. It's really great. And you should check out our video on system actions and global rack spaces if you wanna get into this a little deeper. And hey, drop a comment down if you're a two keyboard player like myself or even more.